Hi, and thanks for tuning in to Pregnancy Pearls with me, Dr. Plenty. Today, we're going to talk about breastfeeding. But before we do, please click the subscribe button on my YouTube channel below so you can get all the latest updates and information as it comes. Also, subscribe to my blog at www.pregnancypearls.com. So, there are pros and cons to breastfeeding. Um, so, let's talk about the pros first. First, it allows you to have bonding time with your baby. Remember, as a mom, no one else can give your baby what you can give your baby in terms of breast milk and nutrition. And so that is one-on-one -on -one time you get to have with your baby. In the beginning, you should be breastfeeding very often, and we'll talk about that in a second. But the more you breastfeed and the more the baby's allowed to latch, that is time that's dedicated just for you and your baby. And so that's time that um, no one can take away. Secondly, the baby will get natural antibodies from your breast milk. So as you know, babies don't really have an immune system fully developed until about six months. I mean, even after that, their immune system is still developing. In that first six months, breastfeeding is of utmost importance um, because your baby can get natural antibodies to fight off infection just from breast milk. And so um, that is something you cannot get from formula. So that is the main reason and the main important step um, for breastfeeding and that the reason that we all advocate for it. Um, also, weight loss. So you're supposed to eat more calories when you're breastfeeding, meaning in the postpartum course, than you are during pregnancy. So in pregnancy, you're supposed to increase your caloric intake by 300 calories a day. That would be equivalent to a small fry. And so people think that they're eating for two. That is not true. You are only eating for one, okay? And you're only supposed to increase your calorie intake by about 300 calories a day. And that's why uh, the average person of average weight is only supposed to gain about 20 to 30 pounds the whole pregnancy. If you are overweight, I'm overweight, I can admit it, um, then your average weight gain is supposed to be about 11 to 21 pounds the whole pregnancy, okay? Cannot be like my sister and gain 80 pounds for each one of her pregnancies. But she is a fitness expert and she is thinner now than she was um, when uh, before she had babies. Don't you love to hate her? Anyway, um, so that is a major reason. You know, getting back down to your pre-pregnancy weight within that first year of delivery is very important. And by breastfeeding, you are burning a lot of calories. Um, in breastfeeding, you're supposed to increase your caloric intake by 500 calories a day. And so that's almost twice as many calories more you're supposed to be eating in the postpartum period than you're supposed to be eating during pregnancy. A lot of people don't know that, um, but it is true. Um, now, that's only like a cheeseburger, a small cheeseburger, so you shouldn't be eating a whole bunch. Um, but um, eating those extra calories because you're burning so many calories is very important. Um, so those are the benefits, the main benefits of breastfeeding. Oh, and of course, the benefit of not having to buy a formula. Formula is expensive, um, and so you would save cost there. So you have bonding with your baby, antibodies, or giving your baby an immune system in the first six months, saving on cost, and uh, what was the last one we just said? Weight loss. So those are four main reasons that you should breastfeed. Now, on the flip side, formula is convenient, right? You don't have to work. You don't have to pump every two hours. Um, if you're working and you you don't have an ample supply, uh, anybody can fix a baby uh, formula and your baby will stay fed. So the benefit of formula is it's convenient, right? And so it is an option. And nowadays you have more than just, you know, Similac, plain Similac, and that's it to give your baby. There are different types of formulas um, that you can give your baby um, if your baby has an upset stomach and you don't want to change your diet um, with breastfeeding, um, there are different formulas that are um, for different sensitivities that babies may experience. So the thing is, it's convenient, right? So for me, um, if you follow me on social media, you know that my son just turned a year. I had a pretty rough pregnancy and that I had a, a lot of complications, including blood clots in my leg and in my lungs. And I lost a lot of blood volume at the time of delivery. I lost 
3,500 cc's of blood and I had to get a mass transfusion afterwards. And so my volume or my blood volume was down. And so it was incredibly hard for me to breastfeed. And so uh, it's recommended that in the beginning, you breastfeed or pump every two to three hours to increase your your supply of breast milk. And so that's what I did. I had a lactation specialist. I breastfed every few hours to try to increase my supply. And when you're extremely anemic and volume down, sometimes that can be very hard. And if you get behind the eight ball, um, it can be hard to produce. And so I was an under producer and I did the best that I could and I gave him every little drop I could. In the beginning, um, he started to lose weight. And so we had to make a decision whether we want to start formula in that first week or whether we were going to um, get donor milk. We chose to continue to breastfeed and then supplement with donor milk. The bad thing about donor milk is it's not an unlimited supply. It's expensive. Um, we did donor milk for, you know, four days after we went home and had to pay about $140 for those four days worth of milk. So you can see how that is not very sustainable. And those, um, you know, it depends on the supply that, uh, your hospital has or your your milk bank has um, because obviously NICU babies and pre premature babies are prioritized as they should be. So we did donor milk for about a week and then after that my milk supply increased gradually. Okay, And so we um, breastfed for a couple weeks before we started supplementing and then I had to end up supplementing with a sensitive tummy um, formula. And so I basically breast breastfed and supplemented with that formula because the other formulas uh, supplementing with that was uh, he, he was not very tolerant, he was very fussy. And so um, I continued to pump every three hours. When I traveled, I pumped every three hours. I ended up getting a cyst in my breast <laughs> and needed um, a workup when he was about two months um, because they didn't know if this cyst was something like cancer or, you know, they didn't know what it was. So I then went to the breast surgeon. She did an ultrasound and said it wasn't a clogged milk duct, but it was almost like a ganglion cyst when you put too much pressure on your breast. Um, the lactation specialist encouraged me to massage, do a manual massage while I pumped. And apparently I was really massaging. I put a lot of pressure on my breast, which created this cyst that was about the size of a silver dollar. So I was encouraged to stop breastfeeding so that I can let this area, this painful cyst go away. I decided not to because I felt like it was the best thing for my baby to, um, to continue to breastfeed. And so I continued to breastfeed um, until about five and a half months because I really was trying to give Harrison all of the nutrients he could get, especially since I knew that with breastfeeding, his immune system would need that. And so I continued to breastfeed um, for about five and a half months until my milk supply just gradually just dwindled. And um, it ended up being that we were more formula feeding and supplementing with breast milk as opposed to the other way around. So um, I say that and I beat myself up like really bad. Like I would cry because I wasn't producing and all of my friends would just say, you know, don't supplement, you know, just keep breastfeeding, you know, keep, you know, you can do it. And the reason that you're not, you know, producing any is because you're not letting him latch. Well, you know, he had a tongue, tongue tie, so he had to have surgery. And after that, he just didn't want to latch that much. So either way, I had to stop breastfeeding and I am getting very emotional talking about it because a lot of us moms beat ourselves up about not breastfeeding. Talking about this subject makes me very emotional because I did the best that I could, um, when it came to breastfeeding and you know as a doctor I know the benefits of breastfeeding I preach about them every day but when your best is not enough as a mother as a new new mother it is overwhelming um, when you are doing the best you can and you have a community of women that may judge you for you doing the best you can and making the best decision for you and your child so um, I wanted to pause and go in a different direction of this video because I need people to understand, one, if you breastfed, that is great. And I encourage everyone to breastfeed. Obviously, if you watch the beginning six minutes or seven minutes of this video, you would see that I talked about benefits of breastfeeding. Um, and I still believe that it is the best for babies to be breastfed, okay? But 
we as women have had to stop beating each other up about breastfeeding. Um, I even had a pediatrician friend after I told her that, you know, my milk supply dropped off tremendously and that I made the decision at five and a half months that I was going to stop breastfeeding. She still wanted me to go back to the lactation consultant. I saw the lactation consultant seven times. And when the lactation consultant tells you this is all you can do and you've supplemented and you've done mother's milk and, and you know, all of the thing you Greek, you name it. Um, I tried it. And you still get beat up by people for making the best decision for you and your family. We've got to stop that. Okay. Um, I chose to start formula feeding my child exclusively because... I could not produce. I had complications during pregnancy. I tried the best that I could and I couldn't produce. And I don't want anybody else that makes a decision. Whatever the decision is, it's the best thing for your family. And so um, let's talk about formula, okay? So we talked about the benefits of breastfeeding. Formula, the benefit is it's convenient. And... It's also good. I mean, the difference between breast milk and formula, nutritionally, anybody will tell you they're equivalent. But when it comes to the antibodies, that is what the formula is lacking. Okay, so you are giving your baby very good nutrients if you decide to formula feed. Okay, um, but in terms of the antibodies that colostrum has and that breast milk has, you don't get that. Um, any breast milk is good. If you have to supplement and you can give your baby some breast milk, then that's great. Um, if you have to decide, hey, you got to go right back to work or you can't breastfeed. Like there are different reasons that people can't breastfeed. Some people may have uh, inverted nipples. Um, some people may not produce ever. Um, and if that is you, you should not feel guilty about that. Formula is pretty dang on good. Okay. Um, you know, I'm in all these groups about breast, you know, moms and breastfeeding. And I mean, it is overwhelming. And I just want to be somebody today that says, you know what? You do the best you can. If you're working and you feel like it's overwhelming and you really have given it a good effort and you just can't breastfeed, that is okay um, to not breastfeed. I said what I said and that's okay. So um, formula is convenient. There's tons of formula and some people have to stop breastfeeding because they're made to change their diet, right? So some babies may have a dairy allergy and you may, mom may have to be all the way off of cheese and dairy, okay, um, in order for that baby to tolerate that breast milk. Some babies have different sensitivities. And so if you can't change your diet or if you change your diet and it's still not working for your baby or if your baby has a medical condition and they can't metabolize, you know, the breast milk, then there are formulas that are specifically geared to, to certain sensitivities. Um, Harrison was extremely fussy. We don't know if he was lactose intolerant or what, but we had to put him on Similac sensitive tummies. He did great with it. He loves it. He's one now, so he's on whole milk. Um, and even to this day, when we switched him from whole milk, that this first couple weeks has been hectic because he wants the formula milk. He doesn't want the whole milk. So there is there are toddler uh, formulas that we could transition him to, um, but he's doing really good with table food, so we haven't felt that necessary. So there are tons of formulas out there. Talk to your pediatrician if you feel like your baby is um, not tolerating uh, breast milk or formula um, so they can suggest changes. Okay, so back to breastfeeding. Um, so ways to increase your milk supply. Things that helped me in the beginning. Um, one, my volume was down. Like I told you, I had to have a have, have three units of red blood cells. So um, making sure you're hydrated 
is extremely important. So you still need to drink five to six bottles of water a day um, to make sure that you are hydrated. That is the number one thing. Um, getting behind, if you start behind, it's going to be hard to catch up. So staying very well hydrated. Number two, if you see that your milk supply is starting to drop, it's okay to do something like mother's milk or um, you know warm compress to help build up that milk supply. Um, there are a lot of supplements. I am not going to drop all of them on here. Obviously, I'm not sponsored by it, by them. But, um, you know, look it up. There are supplements. Um, your lactation specialist is going to try to get you not to supplement. But if you've done all you can, you've met with the, the, lactation, um, the lactation specialist and you have increased your caloric intake and you've increased your fluid intake, then make sure that, um, you know, to the next thing would be the supplement. The third thing is if you're burning a lot of calories, so people that work out, exercise all the time, you may be burning too many calories, that can also drop your milk supply. So before you start a rigorous exercise, make sure that you are um, actually producing more first. Um, get plenty of rest. People that are tired are not going to be motivated to breastfeed. And make sure that when your baby sleeps, you try to sleep, especially in the beginning when your baby's sleeping all the time and just waking up just to breastfeed. Um, make sure that you are getting rest when your baby gets rest. That'll keep you energized. Um, lastly, making sure you have a supply. So when you go back to work or go back to your normal routine, you want to make sure that you can continue to breastfeed your baby. So make sure that you continue to breastfeed and pump every three hours so that you can build a supply. Your baby won't continue to eat every two to three hours. That only happens in the first about four to six weeks that your baby's eating like every three hours. And then eventually your baby eating every four hours, but you still need to try to um, pump to increase, to have some type of supply left in the refrigerator. And you can get those little storage bags and put those, um, that breast milk in the freezer so that, uh, and, and it, you can, it can stay up to a year um, as long as it's frozen. So that when you go back to work or when you send your child to daycare, um, you can, you know, thaw that out, send that with your child, or you can have it there um, so that your child can continue to get your breast milk. Um, also, bring your pump to work with you. Um, if you're in the car driving, you can have an adapter that adapts to your cigarette lighter, and that way you can pump while you drive, especially if you're in a busy job and you don't have time. Talk to your supervisor about taking the time Every few hours, take 15 minutes to relieve yourself because you don't want to get engorged. That's very important for keeping your blood, your your breast milk supply up, and it's very important for you not to have breast pain and engorgement. Um, most of your supervisors will be understanding. That's something that you should talk to them about. You know, basically, while you're pregnant, you know, where am I going to breastfeed, and what are your policies? Really, you should know that before you start the job. Like, what are your policies on breaks and breastfeeding? And what support systems do you have in place? Um, well, that's all I have about breastfeeding today. I'm so sorry I got emotional in the middle of the video. Um, please, if you have not subscribed, please click the subscribe button below. Thanks for tuning in.